Recording, video is recording, Sick. that's it. Three and a half for my mental note. Uh, cool. Something for everyone, episode 44 with Zach Hi. Lemieux, dude. Appreciate you coming through. Thanks Appreciate for you having trip me. Down, dude. Uh, before we get into stuff, I've been, yeah, I told you my joke already that no one watched to the end, so let's get the importance of out of the way yeah. in the beginning, dude. Okay. Uh, we're playing bass in Shape Thor. What do we got coming up for Shape Thor? Where do people need to go and you, be aware of? You need to be at Sammy's Patio. 63 Revere Beach Boulevard Hell yeah. on November 17th. I will be there. But also... I don't know if I'll actually be there, okay but in spirit, not. I will be there for sure. Okay, I like that. And then we're playing in Plymouth on December 15th Plymouth. at New World Tavern. Is that Tavern. Plymouth Math or Plymouth, New Hampshire? Plymouth, Plymouth Mass. Plymouth Math. Plymouth... Choose. Plymouth math. Somehow, yeah. yeah. We're goofing that, that one bad. bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, like I don't it. think I helped you. Yeah. Nah, I liked it. I liked that. It was um, fucking sweet. Hell yeah, dude. Episode 44. Uh, something from everyone, dude. I've been stoked to join this and just like pick people's brain about all the cool stuff that's been happening. I think we all do so much and don't get to talk about it. Just kind of all these, all these shows, all these journeys that just end yeah. up kind of thrown to the wayside and for good reason a lot of them are in the cemetery yeah, yeah, of our yeah. memory. <laughs> yes. uh, but it's fun to go through and mine that, dude. I wanted to start with you. Uh, Right from day one, dude. Where's the first concert you go to? Do you remember? Like, yeah, yeah. Where yeah, are you, where are you sure. standing in the venue? Is it a well attended show? What's going on there? I mean, are we are we talking like slide this le- bad boy close to? Are we talking like slide your chair legit, right too? like legit shows, or like are you talking like the first time you walk into a venue? What are we seeing? Is it a jazz show? Is it a wiggle show? No, the first show I ever actually went to was so sick, dude. It was like Chiodos had just come out with uh, that's right, Oswell. Okay. So it was them. It was an Armor for Sleep headliner. That's incredible. When they had just come out with, uh, fuck, what is it? The really good one. The really, really good record. I'm not the person who's going to fill that blanket, was, but everyone listening is going to be like, big. yo. Uh, fuck, Damn. That's going to bother me. Where now. was it? Uh, it was at the living, no, yeah, the living room in Providence. It used to be a venue. It was like legendary, but it's a shithole. We're talking like 200 people, like 1,000 people? Like what? Probably not 1,000. Like I okay. would say like 300 people. It was, it was packed the fuck out for being... The venue that That's it was. Wild. Yeah, it was I've, sick. I've told the story on here a couple of times, so I'll keep it brief. But my first show was on a 10-year memorial of 9-11. Okay. And it was Avenged Sevenfold playing uh, Nightmare sick. right after the Rev died. Damn. So it's this huge, like, stadium show plus all this, like, social stuff happening. I yeah. Guess, I don't know, social commentary. I don't know what the fuck the term is there. Um, but just, like, this crazy thing. So the first time I walk into the Webster, which is our, yeah, local, oh, yeah, local yeah, 200 yeah, yeah, yeah. room. I've been there. The first time I walk in there, I was like, how is, how is Avenged Sevenfold and this the same thing? Like, yeah. these two. But you had the you walked right into the underground world, so you kind of were, were spoiled or, I guess, welcomed into it, I guess. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I mean, I was, like, I was lucky. Like, my first show was rad as fuck. Like, That's crazy. And it was, like, Chiodos wasn't big. Yep. Craig Owens wasn't, like iconic yeah there, you know yeah, what i mean yeah. like he was just some fucking guy and how old are you at the time 16 okay maybe and is that just like rocky fuel it's just in your veins and you're gone from there i was I, we were like all into music like me and all my homies in high school yeah. but that was when it was like shit that was fucking rad like yeah that's that's what the fuck is up you know what i mean was it the classic like i want to be the person on stage doing that like was it that aha moment or just yeah. like a like did you become aware of music in that moment or is that like oh, the no. turning point no 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 so i guess if you want to go back a little bit further it's like I, all the time in the world. i Let's started go. playing guitar when i was like 12 hell yeah okay so like blank some 41 like the fucking rippers yo mm-hmm. like you know what i'm talking about <laughs> all so the good like stuff. i i i had been in it but like but, yeah I guess, I guess that's not right either. I guess that wasn't my first show. Blink was my first show. Yeah. And it was at fucking uh, Great Woods. That's a wild I'm one old. to forget. Yeah, I fucking suck. <laughs> Just classic. <laughs> yeah, forget no. about seeing I guess, I guess I, I put them on such a different level. <laughs> of course, yeah. That I'm like, oh, like shows like shows that my band could relate to or that mm-hmm. I can relate to. I'm like, oh, yeah, the living room. <laughs> not going to see a huge arena band in an arena. You that's know? wild. But was yeah, it was, that it was, like in the same time period or is that when you were like eight? I think I was like 13 okay. so that's i guess that was just so crazy that blew my little mind to shit but yeah. it was like right when they came out with self-titled it was fucked was that like with friends family like were you like a i guess my angle here is always like were you a black sheep in your family going to see blink or was like your whole house like like listening to metallica so blink no, was like a next no, step. no 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 there was like minimal music in my house <laughs> okay growing up like my parents like they like music and yeah i've acquired different tastes from both of them yep but it was never something like people are always like oh like, I grew up with the Beatles playing in my house all the time. And I'm like, all right, that's <laughs> sick. But, like, I, I think it's better for me because I got to find, like, stuff myself and <laughs> see what I liked myself, which was pretty sick. That's like, an yeah. interesting – I have I still take that angle that, like, uh, I feel like I'm – I don't know. I really, I really try and be aware of what I'm consuming and what I'm, like, 
how that's going to influence me. Yeah. Uh, and I've read that or there's a Charles Bukowski quote and Bukowski is a really complicated guy. And I don't know if everything he's done is great. Uh, but part of the quote is that uh, isolation is the gift. And it's that exact idea of like, yeah. you don't want people telling you what you should consume. It's like, yeah, go sure. out and let yourself wander and explore the world. And like, there's something really free and valuable. And I love that. Finding your own interest. I kind of take that approach with like everything. It's mm-hmm. like you could sit down and have somebody tell you, point a to point z how to do something but Mm -hmm. i'm just like not that guy like i'd prefer to give me like a and b and i'll figure the rest of it out like Mm -hmm. maybe even just a like because i like to learn even if it's like not right because you learn from you know what i mean like not were you good in school no that's fucking terrible i love dude every band guy i've talked to like i Something that is common to a lot of people in our scene is that school wasn't a great success for a lot of them. Nah. But there is also this like desire to learn and this willingness to learn that has taught us all our instruments or producing yeah. or yeah. and it's this weird duality of like, how did they fuck that up? Like how did they not how could they not trick us? It's like we are we do want to learn. How could you not make us care about social studies then? Like, it's like that see, that's the <laughs> weird thing is like, dude, I'm 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 gonna blow this up right now. Like, my shit is so cooked from <laughs> not being in school for so long, bro. I can't do long division anymore. Like, yeah. I don't <laughs> fucking remember how to do it. But it's like, of remember course, yeah. every teacher being like, you're not going to have that calculator. It's mm-hmm. like, well, I have fucking three, right? <laughs> like, I got two phones at work. I got a fucking computer at work that's got a calculator on it. Yep. And I have a calculator. So now what? And I'm doing all the work on the computer so I can literally just, like, type it into the search bar. I don't even need to, like... I don't need to know 21 divided by 7. No. I could just type in 21 slash 7 and it'll do it for me. <laughs> and these kids, they got like chat GBT. Like they don't even have to fucking learn anything. Like you can just get the answer, yeah. can't you? Yeah. Isn't that how that works? In theory, yeah. And I'm uh, fascinated with this on the AI art side of things of like there, you still do need to sift through that and make it good. Yeah. And I guess with the chat GBT, it's like you still need to know what to ask it. But yeah, I'm curious to know what that... Uh, I go back to one of my buddies has a like a four year old kid, mm. uh, and he described that one day he walks in the room and his kids on YouTube looking up how to tie his shoes, and it's like this kid's like he's verbal but like he's not super smart yet like he's still yeah. very much a little yeah, kid like a little learning. toddler he's yeah. learning but he already knows that when I have a problem I can go on YouTube and look it up which is so fucking sick and that's wild yeah and it's like of course there's a lot of problems with kids being on Fortnite all day or whatever like yeah. whatever you want to point the finger at as the villain like. For sure, there's a dilemma to the kid who's on an iPad forever and never gets, you know, hugs yeah, from mom yeah. and dad. But like, yeah, for sure. the flip side <laughs> is like, if we can harness all those kids to just know that like the iPad is a tool to learn how to tie your shoes or any problem you want to learn, yeah, yeah, there's something there. And it's like adversely to that, like yeah, that kid's four years old. Like my dad is like 75 years old, and he'll still be like, "Hey, how do I, <laughs> how do I clear this email?" Yep. Like or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, "He's fucking going YouTube." It's like how'd you how'd you figure that out? Like YouTube. Yep. Like Timmy Turner, like internet. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I it's one of those like podcast spirals that feels so easy to like wander down. It's like we're never gonna quite solve it. Yeah, <laughs> but, no, yeah. Um, it is a Absolutely. fun thought experiment always of like, yeah, where does that lead us in the universe and can we can we prevent it from being terrible? And probably not, right? No, it's probably it's, gonna be good and bad and it's, oh yeah, no uh, way. Too complicated. But, but there's yeah, how like do we steer there's it? the good parts of it, obviously. There like is. YouTube, like can learn anything on youtube dude but you would have had to do it the much more organic way were you learning guitar from like older brother cousin no, dad i uh, self-taught? no one no one in my family is musical uh, okay it's so fucked like my three cousins <laughs> are all like insane like all played like ivy league football at like good colleges like they did well in school ivy league football is almost an oxymoron and it's so <laughs> impressive but it's funny like yeah <laughs> When you said they were all Ivy League, I was like, oh, shit, they went no. to NASA. No, they, they're they smartest. I mean, like, I'm not going to sit here and act like one of my cousins is a lawyer. The mm-hmm. other one's like, uh, like, he works with, like, school kids. He's mm-hmm. like the, what do you call it? Principal? Director? No, higher than that. Uh, board of Education people. You know, the, like, uh, like the person who oversees, like, all the schools. President. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, the assistant president of schools. And then the other one's, like, an investment banker. And they're okay. all... They're all fucking loaded, dude. Like, yeah. I should have played football and yeah. went to fucking <laughs> Harvard. Were you ever athletic as a kid? My parents made me play soccer. Okay. No. So soccer is no, so my, no. my cup of tea. I play soccer all day. Yeah? Yeah, that's Sick. my thing. Oh, yeah. My sister uh, was really good at soccer, <laughs> but then they were like, oh, like, you're going to be good at soccer. I was like, I don't think so. So then where does the music come in? Are you teaching yourself then, like, listening to Blake yeah. and just figuring it out? Like, uh, I, w- I went to a private school. Uh, mm-hmm. It was an all-boys private school. Absolutely fucked. It was, like, eight kids in my class. So Like, like K through eight or through high school? Uh, it was to eighth grade. Okay. So one of those dudes showed me Enema of the State, and I was like, this is lit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, 
damn, I want to learn how to play guitar literally from that. And that's what happened. Damn. And I think it was that and uh, all killer, no filler. And he, like you just where did you get the guitar from? My dad bought it for me. Okay, I got, was just like, like I want to play guitar. And he was yeah. like, here's a hundred dollar guitar. Made it happen. Yeah. Figure out how to figure it out. And we'll we'll talk. Is that just sitting in your bedroom? figuring it out. Hell no. Okay. I smashed the fuck out of that thing. Like I was like, I got a second guitar. I was like, fuck this thing. Broke it. <laughs> wasn't it? It was like a strat knockoff. It wasn't cool. Gotcha. At all. I in retrospect, I wish that I had not done that, but yep. At the uh, time I was like, fuck it. <laughs> you want to start to get more serious then. So we start to learn uh I I'm laughing at myself that like blink is simple enough that you can teach it to yourself and it's yeah. a way to like learn guitar. And, I got yeah, better at guitar in. after I quit guitar lessons. Okay, so there is some early formal guitar lessons? Yeah, I'd say I took lessons per, probably like the first year. Okay. And uh, the dude who taught me was fucking great. Like, he's a really good guitar player, but I didn't want to learn how to read music. Like, what the fuck do I need to read music? <laughs> I still don't know how to read music. Yep. And I still don't need to, by the way. Like, yep. So I didn't want to... It was just like, you got to learn these fundamentals. Fundamentals are never going to be good at guitar. And I'm like, nah, fuck that. So I'm just going to learn stuff that I want to learn. Yeah. And eventually it got to the point where I was like, okay, I can play like enough stuff well enough to be in a band. That's kind of how I learn video, yeah. right? Is I start recording covers of myself and I get comfortable enough yeah. with that, that I go, okay, I'm now ready to take this to other people. I'm now ready to join my first band, uh, yeah. to use that analogy. Uh, and yeah, then it grows from there. Do you, now as an adult who is like competent playing the instrument, mm -hmm. is there any desire to go back and take lessons? I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> but the adult or the competency part? Both. <laughs> but no, I don't want to go back and take uh, lessons. Is there any desire to like get into like the music theory side of things? Or are you happy still? I, ch I, ch <laughs> I tried doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, like I was watching, I was watching a series on YouTube mm -hmm. and it was like, I got through like maybe like the first five episodes and it started getting into some like crazy circle, the circle of fifths. And I was mm -hmm. like, I, I can't, I can't do that. Like, I can't do this. Like, I'll, I just write music, and, like, if it sounds sick, it sounds sick. Like, I don't need to know that shit. If it's, <laughs> like, I, I can make it sound good enough to where I can record it and hand it to Maddie or whatever and be like, here's a song. And yeah. you know what I mean? Like, pass that. I'm like, that's what I got him. That's what Maddie's for. He's the, he's the you know. <laughs> you like, need an ideas guy. You need yeah, the structures yeah, yeah, yeah. guy. I'm just, like, I'm just, I'm just facilitating. Interesting. So a lot of the shape throw stuff, then, uh, yeah, ideas that you spitball, you kind of, like, catalyst for a lot of those songs? Uh, Not this stuff. Like, the record we're about to come out with, mm -hmm. uh, they had another bass player, and he had written a ton of that stuff. He's actually in Euclid, too, uh, Boomer. And uh, yep. I did I did come in and contribute a song. So, and I worked on a, another one. It's like, I don't know, like. But I did all the vocals on the record, so it's like gotcha. I did contribute to it. But like I came in and just wrote a sick song off the rip. Like I'm not gonna lie, it's a <laughs> tight ass song. It's the first song <laughs> oh, yeah. we started playing, so I'm not gonna sit here and act like it's not fucking. Is that right. song out yet? Yeah, which song is it? No, it's called Death Dealer. It'll gotcha. be out. It'll, it'll be. It'll out. be out. Yeah, it'll be out. <laughs> we can leave that there. Pro yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, sometime between now and 2025. Okay, I like that time. Probably not yeah. that long. Probably not 2025. Yeah. Sometime between now and the year 3000. Between now and the Jonas Brothers song. There you um, go. King shit. When does the first band start then? So we're starting to like play guitar. We're starting to yeah teach ourselves to do this instrument. When it starts to get real, yeah. What does that first band, what does that adventure look like? So I think that really started like, the hardest part is always having a drummer. Like from the from the jump, it was like, Interesting. need a drummer, need a drummer, need a drummer. So I just hung out with a few kids who played drums at school. And it ended up just being like freshman year, like me my homie Ben and my friend Pat that I'm still friends with to to this day like we just started a fucking terrible terrible we love Chiodos of course mm -hmm. we just started like a terrible metalcore band and it was like just so crude and awful but <laughs> I don't know we had fun it's perfect yeah. yeah yeah it was sick like it was the first time we had done it so it's like it's obviously gonna suck. Uh, what stands out is like the the classic beginner traits that you guys in like grandma's basement or are you guys playing like to nobody? Yeah, what like yeah. what defines all, that as a failure the, of a project? D all the above, like <laughs> playing in Ben's parents' basement, like those his poor fucking parents too. Like we sucked yep. like so bad. Like even good metal probably sucks to most parents. Yeah, dude, and they're <laughs> so, you know like they're like people who were in their 40s at the time and like they yeah. got like two other kids who are younger than me and ben and we're just down there like fucking raising hell is that like once a week are you guys down there every night like what I don't you, think, how often are you raising hell i think that we were smart enough to know that that was like even at the time at like 15 <laughs> yeah. we were like it's not an everyday thing it's yeah. like uh we'll 
is it was shit. Like Pat, our our drummer Pat lived on Cape Cod, and we lived like probably like forty minutes from him. So it was like we'll save it until Pat's here. You know what I mean? Because like without yeah. having a drummer, it's literally is pointless. The drummer thing just like a because drum kits are so expensive and prohibitive to get into. Like why is there such a shortage of drummers always? I don't know. You're supposed to be the answers, man, dude. You got to tell me everything. I fucking know. Like, Learn dr- me something. Drummers are the the <laughs> number one, the most important thing in yeah. a, in a band, I guess. Besides the vocalist, I would say, because you you got to hold that shit the fuck down. Yeah, I think it's. I'm. I found drummers, but like finding a good one and finding somebody who can play to a click and hmm. be consistent all the time and doesn't hit like a bitch. That's that's where you run into the you know there's yep. dr- there's drummers but there's not drummers sure I guess yeah. is a good way to say that I guess yeah yeah I'm, I I think I'm always very musically ignorant so it's fun to hear like the band side of stuff of like I've never tried to assemble my 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 dream team of five uh, we got extras here if you want them uh, yeah I'll be I'll um, be knocking into those <laughs> please dude enjoy yeah we got waters if you need reinforcements later on yeah, we'll <laughs> um, see we'll see how it goes um, I brought water to be to be uh grown up <laughs> hell yeah i don't know if it came on air but i appreciate you making the trip down yeah. i'm also realizing that i don't think i normally try and say people's names and fumble it i also normally do my own plugs and i didn't do either one of those so quick little yeah, interjection episode 44 with zach lemieux you're playing bass and shape thrower good pronunciation nice dude Thank i try it's fucking perfect uh, zach lemieux uh is there any other bands we should be in, uh aware of shape thrower the one we're mostly involved with now yeah 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 i play guitar for my friend chris sabansky he's a solo artist he's rad as fuck you should check him out Pl- yeah. we'll plug him uh and then my one two second plug my own stuff uh i just got a new video that announced got an i have a new music video that just got announced today for at least next week uh it's called love mistakes for half-hearted it comes out uh oh, thursday yeah. november 2nd uh and i'm stoked on it it's my first fully like cg video and i've been chatting a lot about it here of like I've always used CG as like a little accent thing and I've kind of filmed videos in reality as like a, I'm confident in reality and yeah. CG stuff feels like a reach. So let's kind of put it as a little accent. So there's some room for error. And this was like, nah, let's go hundred percent into that. I think I'm ready to take that step. So let's put my money where I'm yeah, at and see if it happens. That's sick, dude. Uh, so it's finally happening. I've been nervous about it for a while, but it's finally here. Uh, it's finally done. And we should have it out in about a week or so. So it got yeah. announced. There's a little trailer out. So go watch that. Go tell how hard they're cute and awesome. Um, and we'll get back to the show. Back to our regularly scheduled programming here. Yeah. Um, first band is dog shit. Uh, Terrible. What do we learn from that? Like, uh, as we're going through that, so you're 15, you're 16, it's exciting. Like, it's a fun thing. But I assume the normally what happens in these situations is that there's one person who says, wait, I really want to do this. And four guys who are like, no, nah, this is kind of cool. And then that split happens of someone trying to take it super serious and other guys trying to chill. Is that kind of where this first band goes? I, I don't even fucking remember. Okay. Um. I don't know. I we played shows. I'm sure that Pat quit. Mm-hmm. I because like Pat was from far away and his parents were like so <laughs> so fucking strict. So I'm sure Pat probably got tired of lugging his drums like wherever the fuck he was yep. bringing them. He probably dipped and like we discussed, there's no drummers, so we were probably just like fuck it. And we were also in high school, so it was like the thought, like we were a joke. Like yeah. like I don't think that I can state that enough like where we were from new bedford like that mm-hmm. scene and there's a lot of really good bands and we were really fucking bad and like a really good scene so i th- like making friends with their local bands or like getting told that you were shit by the bands oh there? yeah they were like you guys fucking suck like you guys suck like it was known like like we were friends with bands <laughs> okay and like these were people we were friends with in real life and they were like you guys are fucking terrible like <laughs> how does that as a 16-year-old, that would kill me. And I think as a 16-year-old, soccer was my obsession. So if I replace soccer with a band here, I think yeah. if someone came up to me and said, You suck at soccer. You suck. It yeah. would, like, I would, yeah, that would be a real personal attack. Like, is that something, like, yeah, was that a death threat no. as the band? Or no, like- it's so fucked up. Like, the older I get, the more I care about stuff. Okay. So at that point, like, you're like, your band sucks. I'm like, Okay. You already had the wisdom to be like, I was like, "Ah." I didn't. Yeah. I had the wisdom. Subjective. Then. Yeah. At that time I had the wisdom, but now I'm like, what don't you like about it? It's like, give me a list. (laughs) What's wrong with it? Is that just young naivety then? I think so. It was just being like, I, my band fucking sucks and your band is sick, right? We're playing the same VFW brother. Fair. Fair. So it's like, you can tell me we suck. We're still doing the same thing. Does that like light a fuse in you to prove them wrong or does that set a seed of like, oh, maybe they're right? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I mean, if I, 
I'm glad that I was like a cocky little shit <laughs> in certain for certain things like yep. that because yep. it's just like nobody was gonna stop me from doing what I was doing. I'm, like I was I was cooking like Zach was on. You know what I mean? I'm glad you said that. I think that's the other piece of like the YouTube university thing is. It requires somewhat of an arrogance of, from us to believe that we don't need someone to teach us. Like, there's a, a very classic model of teaching, right? If you want to learn math, like, yeah. there's a very traditional way to do that and to sit down with someone and go through the and steps. And they got books. And for us to be arrogant enough to be like, nah, fuck it. We can figure yeah. this shit out. Like, there is an arrogance there. I'm glad you brought that up because I think I think as an artist, it's very uh, desirable. And for myself included, it's very uh, tempting to, to be so humble. And, yeah, it's like... I don't even care, dude, whatever you think. And it's yeah. like, no, there is an arrogance. There. Like part of why I make music videos because I think I can do it better. And that's yeah. not me saying other people do it badly. It's just like, yeah, it's my own ego being like, I think there's a way I can make this better. I think I can add my two cents to this and improve what's happening here. I don't want to say that you could be like health healthily arrogant, mm -hmm. but I think that it's good. I think that there's like a fine line between like yeah. being confident in what you're able to do and mm -hmm. being arrogant. Like being arrogant is where it's like, all right, fuck that dude. He's a dickhead. Sure. I don't want to have anything to do with it, which I'm sure with how people are when they're younger, especially myself, like, fuck that kid, fuck that band, you know? Mm -hmm. It's easy. It's super easy, like, when someone's a cocky little shit to be like, fuck them. That's the one thing that I envy about bands is, like, you kind of can bury this 16-year-old part of you in your chapter, where I feel like, to me, it's like, I'm still Peter JT, and I was yeah. still selling that brand when I was 16 or yeah, 18 yeah. starting this. Yeah. Uh, and I always joked that my strategy at the time was just to hand out business cards. Like, I'd go to the sold-out Palladium and be like, yo, literally no one's leaving here without me going up to them saying, hi, I'm Peter. I'm taking photos tonight. If you want to see them, here's where you go. And... I think it's a good business strategy. I it think is. I would recommend it. It is. My challenge is like, I probably pissed off a lot of fucking yeah. people just walking into the middle of conversations be like, sorry guys, I know you're talking, but boom, I got to get boom, to the boom. next people. Yeah, so. like, <laughs> it's funny that you say that because I met literally like one of my best friends in the world. He like married me and my wife. I was his best man. Dude, he walked up to me at a club and was like, that's funny. I, I manage bands. And I was just like, <laughs> sick. We just started hanging out and just never stopped hanging out. Hell yeah. I don't have the wife. Maybe I have the best man or the Yeah, yeah. Now. I was like, like, whatever. This dude's a homie. Like, shout out, Dave. King shit. King um, shit. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And I think, I don't know. If, I don't know what I would do now. If I was starting my business now, I think I probably would do a similar thing. And I guess I would put a QR code on it instead of making them type something in. Like, I think I would modernize it a little bit. But I still believe in, like, the physical medium. I think we all. Yeah. I think Instagram is so. I hate the term yeah. oversaturated. It's such yeah. an annoying thing. But it's like. It's so hard to connect with a profile. And I think a person is such an enormous yeah. thing. And 50% of the people like me, it's a numbers game, right? Like, I'm, yeah. most people aren't going to be excited to see me, but some people so will. So, uh, it's like, it's like, at least you're not getting punched in the face for walking up and saying, like, hey, I, I'm doing my thing. Like, yeah. check it out. You I know? think I also was wise and that I understood it's like, you might not look at me this time, yeah. but if every time you're at the Palladium, I come up to you and yeah. say, hi, I'm here, yep. here, one of these times it'll click, or one of these times you'll see my photo and be like, oh, that's that kid, Yeah, and yeah. now there's something. And so I think I also did well to understand it's a long game. So my ego is like, I'm worth checking out, but I understand I'm not worth checking out yet, or it might not be yeah, shit I, yet. I, so I there's you. some balance well, there. I think you're smart in that respect, because like you just said, I'm going to burp. Dude, let us have it. Yeah, there so, we go. Like, like you just said, like you've been ripping the same brand for since you were 18. Yeah, 10 years. Uh, basically, all right, yeah. so 10 years. Yeah, give or take. That is the biggest regret that I have now in retrospect mm -hmm. is not taking a project and doing it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like that, every band that I see is like absolutely massive. I, it takes a decade, like at least. I've been, from what I see and who's successful now and like who's fucking crushing. Yeah. They've all been in that band for 10 years. And that was my thing. Like, I was like, well, it's been three years. That didn't work. Let's try something else. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you do that for a couple of years. And it's like, this isn't working. It's like, yeah, no idiot. You have to stop quitting bands. Like, you have to just like, mm -hmm. there's no instant gratification in this game. I like, I wish I could tell, like, I'm 33. I wish I could tell my 21 year old self, like, yo, dumb fuck. <laughs> 
stay stay in this band or like the next band you start Mm -hmm. don't stop like you have to keep going Mm -hmm. with the same thing you have to build the brand like you're doing and like that's what i regret not doing and every band that we look at it's like oh they made it overnight it's like yeah but they had another name for nine years before so it is still the same 10 year model we just somehow overlooked or yeah we're not getting yeah their first record is sick and it's like that's actually their third record the first two are so (laughs) bad you've never heard them like shit like that you know what i mean yeah yeah i think it's a wise thing and it's I think helpful for me to remember too that like yeah it is that slow grind and it's easy to be impatient along that process yeah uh, uh, very, but, very. Uh, I think yeah the go back to my my tangent there I think the my one issue there is like I'm still that kid and I think there are probably people who I annoyed back then who still when I walk into a venue see me as like oh there is that annoying kid and that like, fucking guy they don't yeah. even like it's 10 years ago right they probably don't even connect that moment but like the feeling is still there and that's one thing I wonder it's like oh maybe if I was like 75 percent as aggressive with that if it would have been better for me in the long run and i don't yeah. think that's totally true shoulda coulda woulda right right uh, but i think with the context of a band there is something very freeing about every couple of years being able to be like no that is that old chapter here's yeah. this new thing let's run with that i mean it's sick i had a shit ton of fun yeah going from like from atlantis we broke up uh Failing Sky was another band from Providence at the time. They broke up at the same time we did. Or no, sorry, like half, 60% of their members left. We all started a band, did that for a few years. Like, we did some tours, and, like, mm-hmm. they were, we had fun. It was sick as fuck, dude. But yes. I was like, I don't want to play heavy music anymore. Like, I don't want to scream. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do this. So we started Living Means, and it was like, we did that for a couple of years, and it was like, we're tired. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. I was just tired. Uh, great segue there. Yeah, I'll slide right into From Atlantis first, I guess, the, the first part there. Uh, <laughs> right. Sorry, guys. You got right into vocals there. When does guitar become vocals? Or I played guitar in From Atlantis. Okay. So I did that for... What, like, years? I'm trying, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Right. I think I probably joined From Atlantis in, like, 2010. Okay. And we did that for about three years. So, like, we were doing tours, like, recording, like, all that stuff. It was like three years. Hell yeah. Nonstop. I, before, uh, for research for shows, and I yeah. <laughs> use research as a very light term. I like to, yeah, look through Facebook. And one thing I was very surprised is, I guess, from Atlanta is a little bit before my time. Yeah. Um, yeah, my first concert is right around there. And then it takes me a couple more years to get into like local mm-hmm. underground yeah, side of stuff. Yeah, I gotcha. Um, as I was looking from Atlantis, though, the one thing that surprised me is how many, as I like typed it in the search bar and saw all the posts that come up, is how many people in the last since 2015 have continued to say I miss from Atlantis and how many people in my life are like looking back at from Atlantis as as a thing and it was a really interesting thing to me it's like yeah, this is 10 years ago now yeah. and people are still talking about like from Atlantis from Atlantis I miss this let's bring them back let's have this happen again that's fucking uh, wild it that's, is it's that's hard very hard to I'll I, show you, you the post you after. say that that's mm-hmm. funny because like everything that I remember is just like fuck them fuck that fucking band I'm like, sure it is yeah Cause like I can I can talk from the outside perspective. Mm-hmm. I was in another band, like I was in Die Another Day, and we were watching from Atlantis just come out the cut, recorded with Landon, mm-hmm. like Derek Bunker, baby. Derek Bunker was a fucking animal. Like his singing was so good, and I was like, fuck. Cause like we literally like head to head rivalry. Like we hated each other, hated each other. Cause we were both just metalcore bands trying to do i wouldn't say something similar but like when have you heard two bands making it out of the same place at the same time so it was sure. fucking war and i was like i hate how good that band is like <laughs> i hate how talented they they are and it's like they're like you want to join i was like yes thank you <laughs> yes so i'd like to sorry i'm going to abandon like my best friends and go do that because like again i was young i was naive like i was yeah. in die another day I'd probably been in it for like maybe a year and those dudes were a little younger than I was. They were mm-hmm. still in high school. At the time, I was like, we're going to tour. Like, I remember when <laughs> it's so fucking funny to say this. Like, I've never told this story like out long. Um they're like we're getting signed to Sumerian. Like, we're playing a showcase. You want to join? Like, the the showcase that happened, it was done. It was like the day after. Like, you want to join? I was like, yep, down, gonna tour. Like, it was guaranteed. Like, mm-hmm. even if it didn't, we didn't get signed to submit, we we're going to tour. So it was like, that's the end game, right? 
it's there. Oh, I'm waiting for the, the other shoe to fall here. I don't <laughs> know. Like, like oh, okay. it's just so fucking weird because it's like you spend so much time like being like fuck this band, and the yeah. second they ask you to join, you're like, yeah, yeah, and then you're like, dude, like I lost friends over it. Well, like the probably, dad guys. Probably like, part of that fuck that band is is respect though, right? It's a it's an intimidation thing. It's some sense of like it's yeah. it's a respect thing. Yeah, it's dude. It, they were they were recording with Landon when mm-hmm. Landon tours when like Plot and You was just starting to get like mm-hmm. notable. That was a big deal. Like, I remember going to record with him. Like, we did uh, Echoes and Answers with him. And mm-hmm. the first time I went there, and it was like, I don't get, like, in awe of people. But I just, like, I've been playing guitar for 10 years. And, I like, he's like, mm-hmm. all right, just track this. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like, fuck, dude. Yeah. Like, I was, like, just yeah. so nervous because you're like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's fucking. This, and you probably this, drove across the country to be there. Yeah, we drove like we yeah. drove like fourteen hours to Ohio. Like it yeah. was it was a whole thing. Uh, and like, granted, he for that record, like he did do a fair amount of the writing. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna put it out on the record because there's <laughs> there's been a lot of speculation about Landon writing from Atlanta <laughs> stuff, and I can't call for the stuff before that, but he did contribute a fair amount to those songs, and they were rad. Uh, you mentioned Sumerian. I thought I saw Invogue Records. Mm-hmm, is there mm-hmm. uh So that's... Does one work out and does one not? Or is there like a uh, part one and a part two? Yeah. No. <laughs> the, okay. no. I was like, we're getting signed to Sumerian. And I guess that's... Sh- I don't know what happened with the showcase. I Things never, happen. I yeah. know. Yeah, I never... I just never, it just didn't pan out. That's so, the nature of labels, though. Is yeah. Everyone's going to get signed to Sumerian, right? I feel like I've heard that so many more times that I know it's actually oh, yeah. got signed Well, to I mean, like, think about it. It was like back in the day, everyone was signed to Rise, Sumerian. Like, yeah. Tragic Hero. Yep. So, you know, like with all that being said, I'm in the band and like we're 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 here we're recording of Landon mm-hmm. and it's like I'm like I'm fucking here. Like I have arrived. And you're like twenty at this point, so you're right in that Yeah, like, I think so. I'm yeah. about twenty years old and that was when so from Atlantis had like forty different lineups even before I was in the band. Like there's dudes who are in the band way before me who are probably like you shouldn't even be able to talk about from Atlantis. Like, that's not even, like, your thing. I'm like, okay. Classic but, local band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, dude, like, like I remember being in the parking lot of a venue and seeing the guitar player who played guitar before me mm-hmm. and just being like, hey, what's up, dude? And he just was like, fuck you. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> all right. So all right. All right. <laughs> it's such a weird, like, uh, you mentioned that, like, two bands have never made it out of the same state. And I... I would argue that Connecticut is a great place for music right now because of Currents. Yeah. I would argue yep. that Currents like is so good that not that like I don't know Dreamwake's next band that comes to my mind is another band who is like I was just going to say shout, shout of, out Dave. Uh, shout out yeah, yeah they're, they're great and I think that uh, they have earned every ounce of success. I think Currents has further primed the the market for them to succeed even further. Or Boundaries have, maybe is another good. Have example. you seen? Have you been seeing the pictures from that tour that Dave's playing on right now? Yeah, yeah, I went out and I yeah, I saw a cut of the data. Insane. That. Unbelievable. Like couldn't happen to a nicer dude. Unbelievable. He's so nice. Um love yeah, I love all those guys. And I think that it's exciting to me. It's like, yeah, Currents has succeeded so well that like I don't know if that makes managers look at Connecticut for the next thing, but it's like it it has to Dreamway and Currents are connected in some capacity, right? It There's definitely some, doesn't hurt. Yeah, right. And like I think I don't know. I I to your point, yeah, I think there was there is the old sentiment of like two bands can never make it from the same place, right? In Connecticut and Providence, yeah. you talk about this old kind of band rival in 2010. That's yeah, dated, and we've all outgrown since then. But in the in the heat of the moment, there, it's like I think even that is flawed. That if one of you makes it, the other of you, it's like you're a direct support now, right? Like go yeah. go support them. Go somebody help them. somebody's better. Like at the end of the day, and it's like you're not going to dictate that. I'm not going to dictate that. It's whoever gets signed to a better label first is going to dictate who the better band is. It yeah. doesn't matter. Like there's a million people that listen to this band or that band. It's like, we appreciate you guys, but you have nothing. To, it has nothing to do with yeah. a label being like, they look cool. Like their music yeah. isn't that good. They look cool though. So let's take a chance. Cause that, like, you remember that time it was a lot of that. It was a lot of like, you got to lose weight. You mm-hmm. got to dress like this. You got to have hair like this. And it's like, fuck that. I I've, can't believe we ever did that. Like, I've that's heard so lots of versions of that. Did you ever have a personal version of that of someone coming to you and saying you have to change this about you? 
No, not going. myself personally. There were other people in the band. Who... We can leave names. Like yeah, that. I yeah, no, 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 I, I would never, I'd blast, never do that. But is there a story that comes to mind of like the, the one that comes to my mind is a producer I've worked in the past or not that I whatever. I've been in the studio while they're working with someone. And I was working for that same band. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a producer that comes to mind who's chatted with me. And yeah, given that same story of like he had managers produce. I'm not sure exactly who the who the suit was. and probably wasn't yeah. a suit, but... Uh, De- definitely the, not. The Sumerian suit. <laughs> yeah, there you, go. There the, you go. Uh, monster energy drinking motherfucker. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever the Sumerian suits were. I don't know if it was Sumerian. Yeah, whatever. Whoever the guy was. But someone came to him and said, like, yeah, your band could be sick, but you got to lose weight. And yeah. It's one of those, like, wild, and especially in our metal core, it's like... Um, I'm trying to pick my words here very carefully. Like, I think in a... I would expect that in a pop genre yeah. that, I, I, that I tie to sex and physical appeal. But in I a metal entirely. genre, it's very, very surprising. And not that it's okay in the pop genre. I want to be very careful. No, of not no, no. I, I get what you're saying. Like, like here's a great example. Like, I went to I went to uh, Boston last night, and mm-hmm. I saw Boys Like Girls. Huge. They were sick as fuck. Like, it was, it was one of the most insane shows that I've ever been to. But just, like... I'm always reading the room, you mm-hmm. know. I've never seen people that look like that at a metal band show. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's all I'm willing to say. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like those aren't the people that are coming to see your band. Those are, like you said, like mm-hmm. the sex sells aspect. Like, dude, they're sick as fuck and they look like that. That's cool, but those people aren't coming to our shows. Yeah, and so it's, I'm always surprised when I hear this in the yeah 2010 metalcore, and I I. I would assume if it happened then it's still happening, right? Like we always talk about like the mafia as being this past thing. And it's like, yeah, probably it's not the mafia that we talk about in the eighties, but like probably there's still some remnants of it. And I think in this context, I don't yeah. know why those two things are connected to me, but in this like body image sense, it's like, I don't doubt that someone at major label has gone to major band in the last year and said, Hey, so, and so you probably might want to consider this. Look at Ozempic. Maybe this will help you yeah. sell more records. <laughs> Dude, fuck, uh, that's so good. In the in reflecting kind of on the, the label process on, yeah, that is it is, would you sign a label tomorrow if you got the same deal offered to you? And I, I don't necessarily like as percentage, we did back I don't know, then, numbers. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even, I didn't even read the contract. I, I sent I'm, it to my dad and I was like, my, I, he's like a finance guy. I was like, yeah, you. read this and give it to like your legal guy and like let him read it and he was like yeah you're good i i, I think what i what i said was about like the percentage of like i don't know 30 70 90 10 like yeah. i don't mean that part i mean like a uh, as a band now i think i'm hearing a lot of bands say that they don't quite believe that the label adds value to them anymore um and i think that there's levels to that i guess i'm wondering like for you as a band like i would assume that where shape theory is isn't too far away from where from atlantis was when they get picked up right like it's not a probably light years away they're they're yeah. in the same so if that label comes to shape thrower now like is it enticing to go like and you know knowing what you know about the process or is it kind of like a been there done that i think i would do it alone this time it's a double-edged sword really like yeah. we we're assigned to in vogue um wasn't like an amazing situation like yeah but to the guy's credit to nick morris credit he did pay for us to do a full length and he put the record out. He paid for physicals. So, like, it's not like we got nothing. Like, mm-hmm. we wrote that record. We were proud of it. We went and recorded it with Nick Ingram, who was a sick producer. And, like, it was tight. Like, but would I do that now? No, probably not. Because, like, I can record. Maddie can record. Mm-hmm. There's, like, most people are, like, anywhere between, like, what, 500 and 1,000 a song. It's, you do five songs, that's five grand. Yeah. That Maddie just saved the whole band or whatever. Like, I was in yeah. another band that I recorded. And, like, CD Baby, uh, Distro Kid, mm-hmm. the fuck do you need a label for? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if they're not throwing money at you, or I think that it would be smart in the sense that we could get a booking agent or something that, like, I feel like that's, fast track to that's what bands should be doing, like, yeah, I mean, if you want to sign to a label, cool. Like, it didn't work out for us the way we wanted it to, but we were also very eager. So we thought we had a lot of expectations at, and yeah. being young that we thought, you know, like, it's going to go this way, and it didn't. Yeah. I think getting a booking agent is probably, in my opinion, the smartest thing you can do because nobody gives a shit if you're not out playing, going to new places, making fan bases in other places. Because 
cool, you played Rhode Island five times this month at dusk, three of them. I love dusk. <laughs> I play dusk every goddamn day, but you know what I mean? Like you gotta, you're yeah. not gonna branch out yeah. if you can't get out of the state that you're in. Yeah. What uh uh what strategies have you used to branch out? Like as a as you're growing a band, as you've gone through growing multiple bands, I guess we'll circle back to the specific bands in yeah. a minute. But like yeah, that's fine. what have you used to then grow bands? As we're starting from Atlanta to shape thrower goes, like reflecting, yeah, we're talking about growing a band and getting it out of your state, like yeah, how do you get a band out of Rhode Island? <laughs> That's a fucking <laughs> hard question. Holy shit. From Atlantis had like it had hype behind mm-hmm. it. I had nothing to do with that. I joined the band at a really convenient time and I just happened to be the one that stuck around when some of the original people left. Like shout out Mike, shout out Tom. I love you guys. <laughs> Thanks sorry. for opening the door for I'm, me. I'm sorry, I miss you. <laughs> um stuff like that. Like they gave me that in. Mm-hmm. But you learn stuff from that and you're like all right, next time we're going to do this. I think it it sucks, but you have to pay to play. Mm-hmm. You have to have good recordings. You have to have sick fucking merch. You have mm-hmm. to play shows and not be absolute dick live. Like, you have to be good. You have to kill it. You have to be nice. Mm-hmm. You have to be personable. You want to have to, you have to talk to people and be relative to those people and not just be, like, an unapproachable prick. Yeah. And it's like, I'm a super introvert, so, like, I don't, I fucking hated that, but I always you have put, to, you have, you have to. I always put that in the context of fans or I always, uh, when I hear bands talk about that, when I'm, when I'm a kid watching a LeBron Stars interviews, you hear bands, like, we literally did one. We literally did. From Atlanta, did a so Brian Stars interview. I didn't interview. watch that before this. I should have checked we'll that watch, out. We'll watch it before I leave. It's um, fucked. I'm sure it is. It's so bad. Uh, I've always laughed. Oh, it's pro- officially a nightcast here. We're, we're here drinking. Uh, I'm laughed that at some point in the show i'm gonna be laughing enough to ask them what their porn star name is and i haven't quite like gotten there yet i can't remember but like i can't remember i'm gonna Ryan show was. up in the fucking blue abercrombie shirt one day and be like so what is it you won't dye your hair fucking blonde i won't but it cool. it's also not the worst idea right that'd be <laughs> sick dude like jared leto and fight club i saw that shit and, and then like, go right to jared leto and joker and just go green after yeah if you want to i could um jared leto is joker right did i make that up no He's like the new one. I'm Was pretty he? sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Like a couple of years ago. Okay, cool. I think. I'll take it. I think it's close enough. He was wearing green, nothing. so <laughs> it's got to be. He's, not, he's no Danny DeVito, okay? <laughs> oh, no, he was Penguin. Um, what you call it? From Atlantis Happens. Uh, we, yeah, we go to travel, and then uh, we got the label part of it covered. Yep. Uh, I seen that band. Yeah, Life Dissolves. We got another couple bands that come come out of here. Uh, anything from Atlantis that stands out as like a like a high water mark? Like, was there a show you played somewhere that stands out as like I, I can't believe we pulled that off, or I can't believe no one showed up to the show? I guess the other side. Yeah, of that. we had a lot of that. Like, there was, there's like two instances that mm-hmm. I can specifically remember just being like, "Fuck yeah!" Like this, this is where it's Give me at. one. Where are we at? Uh, it was South by So What. That's sick. 2013. Yep. I mean, we played at like 10 a.m. But. You were there. Everyone was coming in, mm-hmm. and the stage that we got stuck on was it was right there. So like, mm-hmm. dude, we had a fat fucking crowd, which was sick because we had gone all the way to Texas. Yeah, shitty. Like, all right, perfect. That show was sick as fuck. Every show on the way out, every show <laughs> on the way back, nobody was there. Zero. Yeah. Yep. No one. Like, yep. like no one. How do you lay your head in the van at night after that? Like, are you are you just riding the high of something by so or South by so what and saying that like all these people on the the routing shows are idiots, or are you thinking that South by so what's a fluke and that you know like which one of these wins in your brain? Uh, I think at that point, like our drummer Kirby had recently quit, and we had gotten someone else that just wasn't cutting it. He, no, he was sick. He was a great drummer. Okay. Like, Tyler was a great drummer, but. We're all just really close with Kirby, and when he left, it was like, "All right, we'll give it, we'll give it the old college try without Kirby." And mm-hmm. we did that run, and I'm fairly certain that's when we were just like, "Fuck this! This mm-hmm. isn't fun anymore." Like, yeah. we were never making money. Like, it was just like playing to nobody. It's like we had all sacrificed three years of our lives. Like, nobody had jobs. Like, we were living in our parents' basements. Like. I was 100%, mm-hmm. like, not working, just being a transient. And that's what you did instead of college, right? Yeah, I assume yeah. you left high school and yeah, just went yeah. through the Yeah, like yeah, pretty, pretty much, yeah. So it was like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it was weird. It was like, it was a very sudden and, 
I don't know. It, it was just a really sudden end. Like one day we just all met up and I was like, you want to keep doing this? And I was like, nah. I was like, cool, because I don't either. And it was like, we were really hesitant because once you get, we had a booking agent, so we were on tours. Mm -hmm. We did some tours that were shit. Yeah. But like, we did a Design the Skyline tour. They're like the nicest dudes in the world. But it was like one of those things where it was like a novelty. People came out because they wanted to like, it's like when you go to the zoo. Like they wanted to go and just like be like, is this real fucking life? Like, you remember that shit, right? Do you remember <laughs> seeing Design the Skyline come out? I had some friends. Uh, I'm, I'm double checking my memory bank to make sure I could say this, but I had some friends who toured with Etienne Sin back in the day. Okay. That was kind of a similar story. Yeah, is yeah. What it sounds like. Like, like I got to see this shit. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I mean, like, it wasn't my cup of tea, but they're all such nice fucking guys. And yeah. we did a full U.S. with them, and it was the first tour we ever did. Yeah. And it was like, it was, it was like when they paint you into a corner. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, you guys drop tune and you have synth. It was us, the Browning, who were sick as fuck. The Browning was so rad. Yeah. Like, so tight every night, hands down the best band on that package. And us, who had a synth player. So it was like, they were just like, all right, all three of these bands have synth. Full U.S. tour. <laughs> and Ice and Stars just proved these markets yeah. all work, so let's go. follow the routing. <laughs> yeah, go. It's like, and then they were here a week ago, so no one's coming. Yo. <laughs> no, no one's coming. <laughs> no, nah, that was a sick tour, though. And we toured with Dr. A Dr. Acula, too. Like, yeah. people want to shit on that band. Like, dude, they pulled fucking kids. And the one of the shows, the other show, I know you asked me, like, remarkable shows. It was a show in Illinois. It was uh, Peoria. We played this big fucking stage. And Dr. Acula was pulling kids. Like, it didn't matter. They were pulling kids. So we played, like, a Lupo's. Uh, I don't know if you know Lupo's. Like, a Lupo's side I, stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was big. It was big enough to where I didn't have to worry about bumping into anybody. And mm -hmm. that was, like, that was big for us. We made it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it was, like, this is sick. And the room was packed. There was, like, 300 kids there. That's cool. Yeah. So it's, like. At that point, do you think your whole life is going to be that? No. Okay. God, no. Okay. I think I knew. We definitely didn't have what it took emotionally, physically, mentally to go the distance. Like, we were kids. Literally, we were kids. I've heard people talk about this, like, uh, in the context of everything to me comes back to sports. I've heard people talk about this in the context of, like, Division One sports. Mm -hmm. Of Like, you're a high school star, and then you get to Alabama football and realize, like, oh, I'm not Division One material. And it sounds like you had a similar moment of, like, you got to the right to the cusp of the big stage yeah. and realized, like, Oh, I'm not. Uh, there is an eliteness that is not yeah. here. Well, you're like, this is sick, but it's like so much, so many bad, sh like it was like a handful or like not even a handful, dude. It was like for every 20 terrible shows, <coughs> sorry, one of them would be sick, mm -hmm. like really sick. And we'd all like ride that high for a long time. But it was like, it was like big internet hype, you know, like. Mm -hmm. People can listen to your band on Spotify and like watch your music videos on YouTube, but that doesn't mean they're going to drive 40 minutes into Illinois to see your band play at a bowling alley on a floor. Yep. And I think that's where uh, a lot of bands have found success. I think to me, that's where my business card thing comes back in as a viable thing and where I think bands can find success is like, it's about connecting with those people beyond yeah. what other people have. And how do you do that? And the, the first example that comes to mind or the, my favorite example recently has been silent planet starting their Patreon. And it's like, yep, now we got Zoom calls going every week. We got the whole band in a Discord with their fans. Yeah, like, which that's awesome. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's and rad as fuck. In like, the context of moving away from labels or in a world where I, I don't know anything about Silent Plan. I don't know anyone in it. But my yeah. assumption is that, that is step one into moving away from a label is starting to insulate yourself and have a way to monetize your fans directly instead of having to go through a third party monetization. Uh, and monetizing your fans sounds like such a shitty phrase, but it's real. It's like, how does Silent yeah. Planet get their fans to pay their rent? <laughs> like, what, yeah, is, what is the medium? What is the like, road for you to be? It's like you say that, but it's like, I'm watching, I don't even know, someone's YouTube video. Hmm. I'm fucking paying part of that guy's rent because yes. I'm just giving him the view from genuinely just liking yes. what I'm seeing. Yep. You know, and it's like, I guess I never thought about it that way. It's like not, like, that's why Patreon is so fucking rad. Yeah. Because the exclusive content, and it's like, mm -hmm. you got to pay to play. We keep, we keep talking about how you have to yeah. pay to play. Like, you got to pay to play, but you get such sick shit. Like, yep. the Discord server, like, you get to talk to those people that are, like, back when I was doing this shit, it was like, people would talk to you. Like, it was like, the very few, I was going to say, the very few times people, like, 
did mm-hmm. that like maybe once or twice people were like oh my god like from Atlantis like now you have so much more accessibility and it like humanizes you mm. I think it makes it easier to donate to a cause that you have a vested interest in mm. on a personal level you yep. know like I would pay uh, I would pay however much money to see Oasis get back together yep Watch those two and stop fucking fighting with each other. Like, I don't give a fuck how much it would cost. To some degree, yeah. There's an amount of money on Patreon that could get that band back on stage. Literally. <laughs> and it's, a, yeah. it's an incredible tool because it's like, you fuck with us. I think the But one, how hard? How hard do you fuck with us? That's the one place I think it runs into trouble is music. Like, you can't charge for music in this day and age, right? Like, you can't sell a song on iTunes anymore. It's not how you make money on music anymore. No, it's, it's not through selling that. Spotify it's, and It's Apple through merch, yeah, right? Like, the, the Spotify is just a way to get people to click on the merch link, and the T-shirt is what's really paying the bill. And sure, there's some money to be made in streaming, but, like, I don't think anyone's bank account is any different, like, generally speaking, right? I'm sure Bring Me the Horizon made a 1000 bucks, but they don't give a fuck about a 1000 bucks. And for the bands who need a 1000 bucks, I don't think they're getting anywhere close to that from Spotify. No, I mean, like, the, I, I was saying that, like, I, I play for my friend Chris. Mm-hmm. He does really well on Spotify. Yep. He makes money off of it. Like, okay. like he may, I'm just, I don't want to put, like, yeah, this whole thing out course. there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He makes enough money off of it because he's, like, a borderline EDM artist. Okay. And that shit is just a different level of commitment and success, you know, like, Steve Aoki type shit. Like, I mean, he's yeah. not, like, that yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, but it, but it's, like... He's in that kind of vein where people just bang that shit 20 times my, in a row. My dilemma with Patreon then is like if, uh, if to use a Silent King, the Silent Planet example. Silent King, King. I thought Fit for a King was the other band in my head for some reason. But it, like Silent Planet can't put out exclusive songs on Patreon. So how do you like keep this thing valuable over the long term? Because at the front, it's exciting and you can do like exclusive merch deals. But like I think that only lasts so long. And I think the issue is you can't really give them the one thing that they're really there for. Yeah. Right, like people are really on the Silent Planet thing because they like the music, and it yeah. grows into more than that, and you become a fan of the people. But it's like, ultimately, the records are why we're here. Oh yeah, and I don't think you can leak that on Patreon. No, so I, I, you would just be taking money out of your own pocket at that point. So there's right? the, that's the one thing with bands that I haven't quite figured out is like, how do you add value and give your fans the thing they really want without compromising the thing you're trying to give? And L- longevity is the is yeah. the hardest part of anything, I think. Yeah. Like. How do you stay relevant in an ever changing market? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then bands will put out a record that everyone is like, this record is so sick. And mm-hmm. the, everyone in the band's like, fuck this record. But then yeah. they put out another record and they're like, this is, this is us. Like, this is what we wanted to do. And all the fans are like, this sucks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, you literally can't win. Because there's win. always yeah. going to be somebody who's just like, that sucks. Yep. You suck. Your band sucks. Yeah, I've found a lot of freedom in that, though. Uh, one of my first videos ever, I just had a Federico in here last episode, and Federico was one of my first playthroughs, and the comment on that playthrough, we it was one of those things that, like, it was my first video, it gets, yeah. like, 100 views total, yep. and it gets one comment, and that one comment was, like, <laughs> the guitar isn't even plugged in. And in my brain, it's like, yeah, we did a guitar playthrough on a fucking beach. Of course we didn't have cabs yeah. and amps and, like, yeah. track. Like, of course we fucking did it. But it... At first, it like is so infuriating to me as a whatever eighteen year old kid. It's like, such a small thing. You're like, "Fuck!" How are you mad? But but then but. it gets to me of like, if you watch this whole thing and that's all you complained about, then like, cool. That's good. Yeah, I, you, you are right. Like, I see. I'm a guitar player, mm-hmm. so like. That shit's gonna be plugged. I don't care. It's plugged in. Like now, you plug yeah. it into the guitar and plug the cable in your back pocket, right? Like you just have yeah. A physical like, cable. Well, I mean, like I have, a, I have a like I use like a wireless pack. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. but that shit's plugged. No, like, dude, I remember. I I was the same thing. That separates like the person who plays music from the person who is. Of course. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Only a guitar player would make a prick comment like that. Yep. Because he's not even plugged in. Like, yeah, no shit. He's, like, (laughs) in the ocean. Like, what do you think? But it gave me such a freedom of variety here. Or not to say that, like, criticism doesn't affect me or to say if someone's in my video sucks. Like, obviously that gets into my head to some degree. But, like, getting that, um, having that be my first exposure to this was, like, 
oh, people see such different things. And what I yeah. see and what I thought I put out into the world is not what people interact with. It's a totally separate thing. It's a it's like a, such an innocuous experience. thing, too, that yeah. only a guitar player or like a musical elitist. And would that's be like, most things, right? When people are talking about mix notes, right? Like whenever the yeah. record comes out, there's always a, a contingency of people saying that yeah. it's, it's a shit mix. And it's like, I've never heard a mix in my life. I'll tell you what. I've yeah. listened to music yeah. my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> and like there's a very, 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 very small number of songs and records that I think of have anything related to the mix. And it's yeah. not good, but like, uh, yeah, that's most people. And for me, in music videos, it's like as I'm, I try and keep in mind that like as I'm obsessing over getting the shade of blue right in the background, it's like most people heard a song and saw the band. They never even thought there was blue in the background. They didn't think it was bright or dark and like nope. – uh, I'd like to think of my job as like a referee of like, if a referee does a good job, we don't know they're on the field, right? Like a, I, a, yeah, that's... a referee who's too involved is like a problem. And I think with the video, I, I have a similar role. I think a producer in a song has a similar role. Of yeah. Like, you just want to be like organic about it. Yeah. I, you want me to know I was there, but I don't want to be overpowering. And so I think when most people watch the video, they don't know I was there. They just see the people to hear the song. See, that's and, sick. Like I kind of, I kind of roll with this like mentality of being like, I, I call it like serving the song. Mm -hmm. It's something that I heard from uh, Dave Grohl. He's talking about Ringo Starr, and like mm -hmm. everyone's like, "Fuck Ringo Starr!" Like I know I said the Beatles didn't play him. <laughs> I I like the Beatles for the record. Of course, but Ringo Starr is like the best drummer because he served the song. There's nothing that he does where you're like, "Fucking Ringo, baby!" But at the same time, it's so well placed. Like what you're saying, like mm -hmm. nobody's gonna notice that blue but it's so well placed by you that you can't tell something is out of place. As a musician, then how do you make peace with that? And I guess to me, it's like, we all want to write a number one hit, right? Like yeah, I would, of course. I would love my song to do as well as Drake's recent record, right? Like who wouldn't, who wouldn't, but you can't force that. And in this context of like, no, you can't make it. Yeah. How do you approach these two things? I'm like a super number one, a super perfectionist to <laughs> how I guess I, I hear things in my head. Like, I learned a lot of stuff from uh, recording with Landon because, like, from Atlantis did, and then we'll talk about Vanities, but Vanities did a lot of stuff with Landon. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot of stuff, and it's like you have to go through and, like, delve through what's going to work and what's not going to work. But also you have to, like, try to put the stuff that's not going to work into play and eat absolute shit and then be like, yeah, I probably should have listened to that person. I like that. The, yes, I agree that uh, there is something to be said for taking a swing that you think might miss, but you still got to take the swing and still give the idea at least an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, opportunity to hit someone else's ears and inspire yeah. the idea yeah, out yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, I feel like people are afraid to take that chance because they're like, it's like Google reviews, dude. Everybody I know, like, I go out of my way when I have a good experience to leave a good Google review sure. because so many people will only leave them because the my drink, the ice melted in my drink and watered it down. Like, shit, mm -hmm. like, like stupid shit like that. Yep, the guitar's you know not I mean? plugged in. <laughs> like it's, yeah, literally, <laughs> yes. this yeah. fucking asshole <laughs> didn't plug the guitar in and Nantucket <laughs> on the beach in the sand. <laughs> exactly that, yeah. Stupid asshole. Yeah. <laughs> what so a stupid asshole. Goes a long way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally, it's just... You know what I mean? Uh, you mentioned vanities. Let me grab. Uh, I was laughing as I texted. So I texted Maddie earlier, and I was like, "Yo, what are these? What are these couple of bands that we're talking about here?" And it said vanities, and vanities like stuck in my head, and I couldn't figure out why it stuck in my head. As I walked out of my room, I saw this poster on my wall. Oh yeah, and I dude. was like, "Small world, dude." What <laughs> on your wall? So it's in my bedroom wall upstairs. Yeah, I have this on my wall. I'll put it in the put in the video. I guess if you're on Spotify, it sucks. That? Uh, it's oh, the heirloom. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. So I remember that show. It's right in Connecticut. It's outlined in color. And it was a really funny thing to... Obviously, it's on my wall. And it's That's one of the so few crazy. posters on my walls. The reason this is on my wall is because... So it's the Sensory Overload Tour. Uh, it's outlined in color, headlining, in directions. Yep. Um, some other band. And then Vanity is opening. And the local openers are Set Sail at Sunrise and Limitless, which are my boys back in the day. Yeah. Set Sail at Sunrise particularly are still the homies. I love them. Yep. Uh, that's my like my sweet spot as a kid or as a that's where I get into local music and yeah, fall in yeah, love with it. For sure. And so that show to me stands out as one where it's like I went to go see my friends there and this is where I'm like getting into music. Yeah. But like I never knew it was for me. I never knew I could be involved. I didn't know there was a local music. Right. Like I'd seen Avenged Sevenfold play this Xfinity yeah. Center 
and the idea of my friend getting up on stage and I liked Outline and Color of Time, like I was friends with, or uh, I liked their music. Yeah. Uh, and so to see my friends play the same stage as yeah, them was like, that's always, what the fuck? That's, that's an, always that's such a option. mind fuck, isn't it? And so that uh, I got the poster signed by Outline and Color, which at this point is like a, a funny thing to me of like, I don't know. It's, I, there weren't many people at that show. Like to get a, to yeah, me, it's funny yeah. to get a poster like signed I, by someone. Yeah, like I said, we played a lot of both. All of the bands played a lot of bad shows. And so now I probably wouldn't buy the poster. I probably wouldn't get it signed. And so that sh- that poster on my wall is a really important one for me to walk by every day and be yeah. like. Remember that moment where you like Yeah, where you had that like innocence of like Yeah. Yeah, where you were like this it just that aha it's a, it, moment. Yeah, it's like a yeah. new it's like a new thing. It's not yeah. better, it's different. Yep. Uh and so it always that poster lives in my brain and it's funny that that's you were so, playing that show so with Vanities. Fucked. Yeah, that's, that's uh, insane. So Vanities comes after from Atlantis and yeah, we have some more touring success there. Uh is it more tours similar to that sensory overload tour of like I think you were on that for like a week is what I saw online. I think it was like t- like maybe two or two and a half. Okay. It was during the summer. I don't know. I yeah. hate, I always hated touring during the summer because I hate being hot. Yeah. So like, I, I and like, not being able to afford air conditioning. Yeah. Like I just pushed a ton of that stuff out of my mind, and like, I mean, like, we were drinking a lot, and we yeah. were like all kissing each other in the van, and shit. hell yeah, all the good shit. Yeah, like just you know, like just kissing my boys, just give my boys a peck. Make like sure it, everyone sleeps. Well. I think I think yeah, like you got you gotta put them to bed. Like, but it was just like more of like a. We are so fixated on, like, being, I guess, outlandish. Mm-hmm. Like, I our songs, I, f- I, I wrote a lot of that stuff. So at uh, this point, you're on vocals, right? You're yeah, on yeah, okay, yeah. Atlantis, so this, yes, this was vocals, the transition. So you're now the, the person most uh, in charge of the band's identity on stage. Yep. Uh, and it's a big difference there. Yeah, was that something you, like, did you want that role? Did you stumble into vocals? How does this thing first come together? Uh, I mean... I always really looked up to Landon from mm-hmm. Plot and You, course, like yeah. just because I, again, I learned so much stuff from him. Like I would not be half the music brained I am now without mm-hmm. that dude, and like that's what he did. So I was like, he used to play guitar in Got it. a band, and then he started his band. He was, I was like. I got this. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do it. Like it's that. It's that thing. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. We're gonna find out. Yeah. And it worked out. Like it was cool. Like I'd still write the guitar. But you just go, I just went into it with like a, like an air, I guess an arrogance. Like Mm -hmm. there's no way I'm going to be fucking bad. Like I'm not going to be the one in the band that sucks. Like I've never been that guy before. I'm not going to, I'm not starting now, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, Does that band like, it sounds like, or it seems to me from the outside, it's a similar thing to from Atlantis where you guys explore a lot of like the. Uh, it's beyond a local band, but it's not like a international. No, success. yeah, definitely not. Are the two like my my note here to myself was like, how do you separate like the forest from the trees? As you look back at this, and it's like, it seems like there are so many so many shows that are all kind of similar in, yeah. in hindsight, but they're all incredible days. They're all like twenty hour stories in and of themselves. Yeah, right? like, yeah, yeah. And there's something to be worth like being proud of that. But if all you do is look back and like live in this nostalgia like that's also kind of shitty but yeah i don't do that yeah how do you separate like the forest and the trees how do you look back and like appreciate some of it but still yeah appreciate that there's so much of it i guess it seems like there's just a, a blur of 10 years of touring here like we just i did so many things and it's like i'm the prime example of you can put all your eggs in a basket and <laughs> you can just keep fucking <laughs> trying yeah and nothing like being in shape thrower is the sickest thing I've ever done. Like I started vanities, like that was my entire fucking thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm really proud of what we did. I'm proud of all the stuff that came out. Like at the time, like that was the best shit that I had ever been a part of mm-hmm. hands down. Like we were all living, breathing, bleeding. Like that was the vibe. Mm-hmm. But now it's, it's just like, you look back, I look back at it and I'm like, Hey, it didn't work. Yeah. And that's it. Like, if it worked and it was something that I should continually put energy into, I would still be in that band yeah. doing sick fucking tours. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'd be on a label. We'd be on a sick big label that supports us, does all this stuff for us. And it just it didn't it, it just didn't pan out. Uh, what, would, what did you learn from that? So as you, I guess, like, I think for me, the other piece of this is like, yeah, I mentioned that for me, my video stuff, like it's all been one continuous thing. And I think one thing that's great about the band's 
stopping and starting or trying a new band is you get six months between or a year or whatever. You get time to look back and reflect and go, ah, if we maybe had just gone left here, maybe if we had focused more on X or Y or spent less time worrying about yeah. X or Y. Uh, and I think I've gotten the advice that like it's worth, I should take time to work on my business, not just for my business. Yeah. And it's, I think, the same idea here of like, it's not just about plugging a band and trying forever. There has to be some moment of like self-reflection where you look back and go, this went well, this didn't go well. And yeah. now that we're into shape, they're like, yeah, what did you carry with you that you think went well that, that we learned from that? A lot of the stuff I guess that I carried with me is like stuff that I learned along the way, like recording stuff from Landon. Um, big shout out Landon. I love Landon. He's the fucking best person. And uh, I want to also... get into this basement at some Yeah, point. that would be fucking <laughs> insane. Uh, Josh Schroeder, he's another producer yep. that we worked with towards the end. Is he in a band? Why does the name sound very he familiar He recorded, like, King 810 and, like, The Color Morale. King, like, he was an absolute yep. animal. Those were the two names, yeah. So, like, without those two... Like, those are the positives that I can reflect on. Like, I'm so thankful that we did all that stuff. And we did these records with these fucking incredible people who were like i was a sponge yeah at the time because that's all i cared about like we were fucking doing it so all the stuff that i learned from them is the positive that i carry with it but the thing that i learned from going from from atlantis to vanities i think that we all learned is nobody gives a fuck what you did they give a fuck what you're doing mm -hmm. like so these people like yeah. i don't mean to talk shit like i feel like I've been pretty positive thus far. But I can't stand when bands are, like, featuring ex-members of mm -hmm. blah. Like, bro, like, that's sick. I'm glad you were in that band. I'm glad it was a good part of your life. Like, I myself can have that experience, but mm -hmm. it's back. It's, it's back. very much, yeah, you yeah. know, like... What can you do for me today? Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't live... I try not to live in the past. No one gives a fuck that your band toured for three years, yeah. 10 years, 15 years ago. Like, cool, you toured. Like, congratulations. Like, yeah. it got to the point where everyone was touring. Yep. Like, it wasn't that hard to necessitate a week's worth of shows. Everyone can. Yeah, yeah, right? I was just having this conversation the other day. There's, it's going yeah. on tour for three weeks is very different than calling 50 bars for call, calling three weeks worth of bars and yeah, figuring out how you can travel. Like, yes, you can go on tour for a lot less than it takes to tour for a living yeah like i mean i feel like a prick but i always used to like i'd like see stuff after you know like i wasn't touring and i wasn't in particularly so deep in bands like mm -hmm. i've obviously had lulls where i'm just chilling yeah but like bands are like we're going on tour and it's just a weekend and then another weekend and it's like i always used to have this joke i'd call it like the tour in for the sake of tour and tour yeah <laughs> like that's what the title of, on the flyer should be like it's like I just like that's but like I don't want to sound like I'm hating because it's like if you're having fun yeah do it like yep but I've always tried to be the guy who moves like silently and like I'll let what I'm doing be reflected in my mm -hmm. work and I I try not to be that like bombastic person that's like look at me look at my band like yep. we're so fucking sick like, and also it took uh, it took that not working for you for you to fully get there. I think like it's really easy to be like big things coming soon when you <laughs> believe that. And yeah. we all did believe that for oh, a while. Yeah. And it just takes a couple of times of the big thing not coming yeah. or not coming soon. Come to like, Brazil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, like so I, I'm with you. I try to be empathetic to the yeah, the 18, 20 year old, very eager. We're going on tour four weekends this month. And yeah. it's like <laughs> hold on. Okay, so eight days. We like... have we have a couple shows happening this month. This is a good way. And like I don't know. I think it's to some degree it's semantics, right? Who cares? It's it's word choice and who gives a fuck what you call it? Go play the shows. Go get out of province. Yeah, like yeah. But I agree with you that there is some uh, I don't know real some honesty, some introspection there that has to go on of like who 100. are we and where are we? Yeah. I think the the worst thing, and I, I can say this from experience, the worst thing that you can do is take yourself too seriously mm -hmm. or take yourself more seriously than the people around you are taking you because you just look like a fucking clown. Yeah, like. Like you said, like big things coming soon. Like those guys, like what are they doing? And I think the flip what are they side doing is like, now? as you uh, as you take yourself seriously, I think it inhibits the final product. I think the best product comes where you go, or maybe I'm just speaking for me, but I think this is true for more than me. And I think the best product comes from like, I'm not shit. What do I want to make? And I think that there's some. I like that. I think there's some problem when we get into like the. 
I think I'm good at metal. What's a good metal song that I can write? Or whatever, fill yeah. in the blank. And it's like, no, no, no. You're you're already setting up a, a parameter for yourself. And it's like, if you're really an artist, if this is really about creating, then sit down and make something cool and worry less about what that is. And I think for me in video, I try and be aware of like, just what is interesting to me? What is fun? Yeah. What is cool? Have fun with this thing. And like, that will take me a lot further than trying to force out and muscle this thing into the per like there is no perfect it's not going to happen i think it goes back to like what we we're talking about like the difference between being confident and being yeah. arrogant yeah. you know like there's a very fine line and yep. it's like there's shit that i'll admit that i'm good at all day yep. like i have no problem admitting like certain things like i don't i don't know like i'm good at drinking beer <laughs> like i'm really good at drinking beer i can Hell drink yeah. a lot of beer but it's like just keep it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Nobody cares. No, I'm with you. I'm with <laughs> you know you. what I mean? Uh hundred percent. Yeah, no, I think with, with video I have a similar thing of like, yeah, I'll, I don't know. I'll I'll be what I am. I was just listening to a, a podcast with a guy named Cole Bennett, and Cole Bennett's a rap video producer. Okay. Uh and he's someone who I take a lot of inspiration from. I think he's great and he's a really big um uh what's the word? Fan, a big ambassador for just like keeping it fun. And his approach is he has like a like a Simpsons room in his office of like yeah. a, like an eight by eight like walk-in closet that's just filled with Simpsons memorabilia and like old Nickelodeon yeah, shit. That's sick. And it's like the idea is just walk in there and just feel. Like don't worry, like it's just a it's designed to be like a utopic little closet. And like I don't know if I need to build a room in my house, you know, like I don't need to go I, that far. Yeah, I have like a like a but similar thing, like where there is you, something, yeah. They say money can't buy happiness, but it does buy all that cool shit that you couldn't <laughs> afford when you were little that you could get off eBay now for a fucking steal. A steal, dude. A steal. Uh, we are actually past our hour, so I'm happy to keep chatting. Um, but for folks who have made it this far, cool. Thank you. Um, Can I pee real quick? Dude, please do. Let's pause here. Yeah. yeah. Go take a piss break. Pause for two seconds. Survived? I survived. Hell yeah. Air fawn down the stairs. <laughs> I have not. That hurts so fucking bad. <laughs> I agree that falling down the stairs yeah. would in fact hurt. No, yeah, that would definitely hurt. So wait, I so I can just give I'll give you the cliff notes on the rest of vanities. It's it's pretty sure. it's pretty quick. <laughs> Please, yes. So back from break, let's dive. We had done a couple of tours. We did that one that you were talking about with Outline, and we did another one with this band called Mouth of the South. They were rad and we had a good time. It was a good tour too. Like the shows didn't fucking suck. Hell yeah. Except for the last one. Always and one. We got to the point where it was like myself, um, our drummer Chris, like we were always on the same page, like mentally with things. Like we wouldn't really have to talk about it. We both just knew when the other one wasn't vibing. Yeah. We woke up at a truck stop on the last day of that tour and we said to each other, if there's not 50 kids at this show, we're breaking up. 49 tickets old. Dude, there was like seven people. <laughs> that was the last show we ever fucking played. Like, we just agreed that morning. Like, yeah. Like, because I knew he was over it. And knowing that the only other person, like, because he would contribute so much drum stuff to the songs I was writing. Knowing he was over it was just like me being like, okay, I'm fucking over it. Then, like, if he yeah. doesn't want to do it, like, I liked being in the band with the other guys. But, like, if he wasn't going to, it's the fucking drummers, man. They're always fucking everything up, dude. Now we're looking at Shape Thrower and yeah. Natty with some yeah. squinty eyes. <laughs> Just a little side eye action for the boy. Yeah, so I met, then that's, I guess that segues into meeting Maddie. Mm -hmm. I met Maddie at the practice space. Hell yeah. And we still have one. I mean, like Vanity's had one, and I don't, I don't even, I think it was like probably in Depths and Tides, had one down the hall from us. So I just met him there randomly. And then we were just, like, I just knew who he was forever, and I don't know how we started hanging out. We had, like, mutual friends, and I guess we would chill, and then one point he hit me up, and he's like, hey, Boomer quit. I was like, yep, <laughs> okay. And, like, I don't play bass. Like, I I mean, I do. In Depths and Tides? No, no, no. This is, oh, this, oh. This is like, cut to Shape Thrower. Oh, so oh. Boomer quit okay, Shape yeah, Thrower. Yeah. 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 And Boomer's like, now in Shape Thrower again, correct? No, Boomer played bass and sang before I did. Boomer's in uh, Euclid. He plays guitar in Euclid. Is he not playing? Is there another tall, bald guy in Shape Thrower? <laughs> Am I getting confused? Was Boomer ever in Shape Thrower? Am I totally Yeah, yeah, no, up? Boomer was in Shape Thrower. Okay, okay. No, yeah. He, I feel like I saw it watch the Hate 5 6 video that I swear he was in. Like he a live set. He probably was. Okay. Yeah, he definitely. I mean, like, Boomer was in the band forever. Okay, okay. Forever. Okay. So, okay. like, he quit. I don't, I don't think, like, Maddie even got the sentence out of his mouth. And I'm like, 
Yeah. <laughs> like I'm the, but I'm also the king of signing up for stuff that I don't love like I get bored of like six months later. Sure. I'm a guitar player. I'd like to put that on the record. <laughs> I'm a guitar player, but Shape Thrower was so fucking sick that I was just like I saw them one night, probably like a month before I joined, literally blew my dick off of my body. I watched them play Tyrants and I was like <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not in a fucking band. Like I'm so stoked that I'm not in a band. Oh yeah. Because they were just that good. How long have you been with them, though? I think I joined in, like, February or March. So like a year is Yeah, we're coming up coming on about up, yeah. a year. But we've Copy, done, okay. we've done a, we played a shit ton of shows, and we had to redo all the vocals on the record because Boomer screamed and sang. Damn. Yep, I didn't know so all that. Okay. There was, like, a lot of stuff that had to get rehashed, you know what I mean? It's, like, not even just singing stuff. It's, like... Every fucking backup in every single fucking song, every yeah. layer in every single song. He's so many Fridays <laughs> sitting in Maddie's cold ass fucking basement. I like this one. It's it's temperate in here. Hell yeah. Maddie's basement's cold. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Maddie, get your basement to be more like mine, dude. I win the basement wars this time. And um, wear a sweatshirt and there and shit. <laughs> fucking bullshit. I uh I saw online and I'm uh I'm diving in a little deep here, so no, yeah, please good, don't, good, good. Uh, no, don't, good. don't say anything that you're not supposed to say. Okay. But I did see online the Shape Thrower filmed a new music video the other day. So I saw you guys. It looked like you were in like a parking garage. Yes. There was like trucks behind you, line of cars behind you. It looked like there was like nine cameras on this film team. Like it looked like a whole ass production. Uh, is there anything we could say about what we yeah. were doing, what's going on? Yeah. What's oh, happening? yeah. I'll talk about it. Cool. Okay. Last Friday, we shot a sick fucking music, but not the one you're We shot two music videos last weekend. Sick. Damn. Okay. The first That's one. a good weekend. We That's shot, a tiring weekend. It, yeah, I'm, dude. I, then after seeing Boys Like Girls last night, I'm like driving here. I'm like, I need a fucking Red Bull. I need a Red Bull so bad. We got plenty of Red Bulls yeah, here for uh, on the way home. Yeah. So we shot a video Friday night in a shipping container, and it was more of a that's sick, yeah, like a party vibe. Like our boy Danny, shout out Danny. Danny came with like mad guitars, so we got all the serious takes, and there's just a fuck ton of takes of Danny playing guitar, Mike playing bass me doing vocals, like just everyone swapping what Sick. they're doing. So we yeah. had a super fun time with that. But then on Sunday, um, we shot like a really serious one. And it's the homie, uh, Justin, he lives in my building. I love you, Justin. <laughs> he makes like literal movies, like mm -hmm. so much that his Instagram is Justin makes movies. Like he, I've never done something to that level of professionalism. Mm -hmm. So being there, like you, did you see the, you saw the pictures from it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks like a fucking 80s movie, like with oh, all yeah. the steam and smoke and shit. Like That's we sick. shot it in the garage at Emerald Square Mall in Attleboro. Any permits or any cops <laughs> to worry about? I think Justin, uh, he did his due diligence because there was like, we had to be pretty quiet about it. There mm -hmm. was the threat of the, f uh, the, what do you call it? Like the town's yep. police or fire department showing up for like noise. Mm hmm. So we had to get creative <laughs> with that. But yeah, we do have two music videos. Uh, the first one is for the song I was talking about, Death Dealer. And that's like the sick, fun, fuck around. Garage. And then the yeah. other one is for a song called Soiled Hands. It sick. was, I think it was the first song that we wrote after I joined the band. Okay, so these are both unreleased. Yeah, songs. yeah. These, so we have a full length that's done. Fire, okay. It's, is Maddie going to kill me for putting this all in the episode? No. Okay, Every, cool. I think it's like, <laughs> okay. he would have to... He'll kill you first. You gotta go through me, buddy. <laughs> Hell um, yeah. Nah, he it's it's good. Like that's why I'm yeah. that, mostly why I'm here. Like, Hell yeah. We got a full length coming out. That's sick. It's sick as fuck. It's I've done a lot of stuff, obviously, as we've talked about. I've never been more stoked on something that's about to come out. I'm excited. Yeah, it's it it's, rips, yeah. I'm stoked, yeah. It's, of course it's, I'm always biased. I'm excited to see it more than to hear it sometimes. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Dude, when you see Justin's video, like Justin is it's king shit. Mm -hmm. Like he is like the boss. I just filmed a video in a parking garage not too far from here, and it reminded me very much of the experience. Oh. And, I, and ours, it was funny because we were filming like a, uh, it was for Half Hearted's video for Insatiable. Uh, and so there's like a Bonnie and Clyde narrative in that, and it's like a, yeah, a couple who is doing all the crimes, and right at the end, the cops come up on them, and that's kind of like the final standoff moment. And so that's what we were filming. And I was laughing that like I I have lights that I was using to like simulate police lights and we we're making yeah. all this police stuff and I was like yeah. 
we might actually get the cops like, yeah. coming yeah. because of all this. Cop like another, like happening. another cop sees the lights and they're like, "Got to back my brother up." Yeah, and pull we, up and like, we have all fuck? kinds of like fake guns on set. Of like, okay. I knew I knew not to have a real gun on set, but I do have like airsoft guns that I've like painted all like the orange covers off of, so like they look pretty nefarious. That's and, like because we were seven year old me would be stoked about that. They're sick. They're upstairs and they're my favorite things. As I was pre proing that video, I just like uh, we filmed a lot of like. I guess, yeah, I was stopping myself from talking about it because I didn't want it, but I realized it's all out. Yeah, I can say whatever yeah, I want it. now. Yeah. Uh, we filmed, like, all the pre-pro here, and so there's a lot of, like, robberies, and the the issue to me is, like, I can't, I don't want to, f- uh, we're trying to film robberies, and, like, we want to have the robberies feel cohesive of, like, we can't break into, like, a rich house and then an apartment and then a garage. Like, it needs to be, yeah, like, yeah. 10 yeah, rich yeah. houses or yeah, 10 small yeah, houses yeah, or, like, something cohesive. And so the way I solved that problem uh, was by using it all in my apartment. So we just, I have basically two entrances. I have a front door and a back door. So yep. that's one and two. Yeah. And then there's a third like living room where it's like, I can just imagine there's a door there. So we pretended they were breaking into that. that and, like, yeah. We basically just got three or four break ins out of my apartment. Uh, but then there is this issue of like, so this is crazy. So I'm just like sneaking around with a gun in my apartment, like practicing all these and like yeah. standing outside my own front door with a fake gun in my hand. Seven <laughs> so year old I, me is stoked. That I ended up like tight. hanging curtains like outside of my apartment. So it's like it looks probably more sus with the curtains, but at least you just see a curtain and not a kid on. The, yeah, like, with a. And then as we're filming. Can't be I'll, too careful these days. Like a hundred, yeah, that really, was my seriously. concern. Like, God forbid. And there are always like stories of mishaps on set with guns and people not understanding or yeah onlookers not understanding like what's that, happening like or that movie happens all the time and it's yeah a terrifying thing to be in yeah obviously yeah um but yeah so i got the, the great experience of filming myself like creeping around my own apartment with a gun in hand and like getting to film my own little that action movie here. Of fucking fun were Pretty you alone sick. yeah nice. all so super sick. alone my cat was there he kind of ruined some of the shots but it, <laughs> Like it's like 007. Cool. Gold is like golden eye type shit. And then sending it to the band, I think it was one of my favorite demos to send off. Of like, I knew they were laughing the whole yeah, time. Yeah, like, yeah. That's like good. Right? That's good because that's like, like it's organic. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like you're getting the idea out there, but. Yeah. I, li- I like I like when somebody can present something to me without being a hundred percent business. Like yeah. it should be a li- like everything should be a little bit fun. It's always a line to me of like I want to have fun, but if you're expecting serious and yeah. I come with fun, you want to be a f- you want to present the professionalism. Right. Yeah. But and so it's always this line of how far can I push this thing and how many mistakes can I include? Yeah. And be like, yeah, this won't happen in the final, but like. Uh, there's a chain twist video, chain twist video I did for Dead to Me, and the, whoa, wait, 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 you know them? Yes, they're homies. Dan, yes. Dan, uh, I know Dan. Dan is the homie. He's yeah, been he's on this show a couple times. Love yeah, you, dude. Shout out Chain Twist. I think Hell some yeah. of them they're still so fucking this. cool, dude. They rip, dude. I he, they music, just, but, he came out of nowhere with that. He sent me a song like maybe a year or two ago, and he's bang. like, I'm starting a new project, and I was like, This is fucking rad, dude. Shout yeah, out Chain Twist. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 for sure. Like, if there's a band out there right now that's like onto something, it's like them dream wakes onto some mm-hmm. shit yeah like the Conne- yeah, it's yeah. connecticut you guys have really good bands we're doing okay out here um yeah there's a demo i sent to them and the it was like a guy standing in the desert was what i meant to send them but like it was a guy playing guitar and some of like the physics fucked up so was it up plugged like, in yeah <laughs> fuck you <laughs> he ended up just like flopping on the ground yeah and i was like guys in the video you'll be standing up you'll be flopping Nothing on, on the, the ground. ground yeah but it was a funny thing and yeah it worked out but it was to your point of like I ha- almost didn't send it of like, it doesn't matter. It won't affect it. But I also don't want to be like, here's this funny thing I'm doing out of this very serious project. I almost, I almost prefer that because like, like, again, you can't, you can't take yourself too seriously yeah. or you're, a, it's, it gets clown material, it you does. know? And I like that. Like, I like going, like, I didn't know you for shit an hour ago. Like I've yeah. never met you before. But, like, I've seen your interviews, and it's like, okay, like, he likes to have a good time. You got to – I feel like you got to keep it light, you know? Or, like, people will go in, and they're like, all right, this is boot camp. And that can affect – like, I feel like that could affect your final product. Like, if you have people in a certain mindset, like, this is all business, you know? Like, it it, it kind of ruins, like, the organicness of the the vibe of the situation. I've been teaching myself golf this summer, and I've come back to this analogy a thousand times, but it's like – when you try and hit a golf ball hard, I hit the ground, I miss the ball, yep. everything go, it goes left, it goes right. If you just try and hit it 80%, it goes perfect. Yep. And I'm terrible enough that perfect is a very generous statement there. Yeah, but like but- that idea to me has really taken weight in video of like just let it flow, let it happen. Yeah. And that's this, there's a sweet spot there of like don't be lazy, don't be complacent, but like don't force this shit. Uh, as we come up here on our little ending note, uh, so 
I guess to wrap up the shape throw note, we got the full length EP or full length album oh, yep. uh, set up. We got vi- music Two videos in the works. Yep. Uh, anything we want to say about uh, should, this will be out at some point, middle early next week. Uh, is there anything we want to say about timelines of like uh, expect something in a month or expect something in the future between De- now and 2025? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's like a that's a healthy timeline, right? Hell there. Yeah. Um, Maddie just did all the li- we actually did live drums for this. Uh, okay. Yeah, we just not anything against maddie's drums or like re- programming drums like mm-hmm. that's all i've ever done in every song i've ever written and it works damn good but we've just put so much stuff into this record it, mm. and maddie's such a good drummer that it, yep. it, it was almost like why are you gonna sell them short you know like yeah. we had the opportunity it wasn't a, a deal breaker it wasn't a bank breaker mm-hmm. it's sick it's such a fucking sick album like i'm so stoked to be a part of it Hell yeah. And it's cool to be in a band with people who are talented and like, it's sick. Like I'm getting a second chance cause they've been in that band for 10 years. Like yeah. they put in the time Yeah, and it's like from Atlanta. I was just like, I'm just, yeah, I'll jump in. <laughs> I'll like, I'll jump, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I'll jump in and it's, it's nice. Like Maddie's that guy. Like hmm. I was always that guy who I don't want to say like dictated things. The quarterback. But yeah. Like I'm, t- I was Tom Brady in most of my bands. Sure. And it's nice. <laughs> Maybe to Eli Manning. Let's not. Tom Brady is a saint in my heart. Yeah, I don't want yeah. you to take that much credit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, it's nice to have another person who is minded the same way you are in like mm-hmm. a, we need to get this done. And yeah. like, we have legitimate experience that would make it a good idea for you to listen to what we are at least presenting to you, you know? Yeah. I'm stoked to hear more of it. And I'm sure we'll have more of the Shape Thrower guys on as. The record and music videos yeah, come together, dude. Definitely should. Uh, as we move towards our ending here, yeah, I'd like to chat about uh, life outside of music. So I think we've covered Ooh. all the all the journeys of all the plucking and all the tremolo yep. picking and whatever yes, is bullshit goes into music. Um, what are we doing outside of music? Anything interesting? What is our our hobbies outside of playing music? Is there anything in the universe? Are you a are you a rock climber? Are you a hockey player? What's what's happening outside of music? Uh, yeah, dude, I I am passionate about a lot of things besides music. I okay. think. It's healthy to have that because That's surprising. Okay, I put a lot of I put a lot obviously a lot into music, and there's times where I feel really like jaded, and I'm mm-hmm. like I've been working at this for so long, and like my band's not playing huge venues or whatever. But it, it's yep. it's healthy to have that. So yep. as of late, um, I've been learning how to like draw and like paint and stuff. Mm-hmm. I have several friends who are like incredible tattoo artists, and like it's it's cool to see them do what they do but just to pick up like the drawing and painting and like having something else to necessitate my time mm-hmm. that like cools me off it's relaxing it's nice yeah doing stuff like that like that i got dogs i fucking love dogs yeah. you like dogs i, uh, now, yeah, I know I you got cat. a cat it's, i love dogs yeah i i never planned to end up with a cat i kind of inherited them through the grapevine it's been a great journey ever that's since. good yeah that's um, but, Orga- yeah. organic cat yeah yeah i'd love to end up with a dog some foot day but i'll i need a backyard first and then i need yeah. a house to have the yard yep. and i need money to have the house yep and i need videos to do the money it's a vicious so, cycle we're here yeah exactly it's <laughs> we're a vicious here starting cycle. the process uh yeah i mean like aside from that like I don't know, like all the shit that I used to like as a kid, like I still love it. Like I love skateboarding. Mm-hmm. I don't skate anymore because I just get broke off every single time. <laughs> we're like, old, yeah. But like I'm chilling, dude. Like I love skateboarding, like Jackass, Viva La Bam, like all that stuff. Like, you know what I mean? I think a lot of the stuff that you pursue in your personal life, especially when it has to do with stuff you're passionate about, is like stuff that you relate to nostalgia because mm-hmm. you just like it makes you feel better. I've had this, I'm very glad you said that, yes, I agree with you that I agree. Nostalgia is something that I, I agree is a huge motivator, and I think we're all, to some degree, trying to create what we thought was cool when we were 20 in some capacity. Yeah. And I always, as a, as a content person, and I guess to the music point, there's a similar conversation here of like, how much do I, I don't want to just be doing what's already been done, but no, I am yeah. inspired by that. And it's this weird line of like, I don't want to do that, but that is the richest inspiration to me. There's so um, many bands that I've heard that I'm like, I want to be in a band that sounds exactly like that. Yeah. But it's like, like the perfect example for me is like Seosin self-titled mm-hmm. with Cove. I like, I don't think Anthony Green's bad, but Seosin with Cove forever. And yeah. it's just that one thing at that one time. And it's like, what they call it? When you catch lightning in a bottle, mm-hmm. it's stuff like that. Like 
move in for like you just hope that everything is gonna be that lightning in a bottle. Yeah. And it's not. And it sucks when it's not, but when it is, it's hot. I think the 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 drawing there must also help like facilitate that process. And I feel like for me the golf has like the golf doesn't help me make a better music video and I don't think drawing helps you make a better song, but I think getting into the flow state and existing in like a, a creative mindset yeah. does make a better song in the end. I think it's like the development of the process. Mm -hmm. As you continue to learn, like, step by step, like, I played golf a shit ton when I was younger. Like, I was in, like, a golf club and stuff. Oh, so, okay. so, like, I understand what you're saying. You develop those, I don't want to say, like, habits, but, like, the certain mannerisms that you need to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And as you continue to do it, you're, like, you notice yourself doing stuff that you used to struggle to do without thinking about it. Like, yeah. like your hands are just moving and you're, like, oh, mm -hmm. fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you have that breakthrough moment and you're, yeah. like, sick yeah and i think i've tried to accept that like i uh i'm a very obsessive person and i think what i'm trying to accept is that by spending time in other stuff it does make the video stuff better by by only doing video stuff i think it's somewhat limiting and by it's, trying to diversify my interest in my life it i think up, it's like unhealthy because you try to yeah w when you force it like forcing stuff and just making yourself yeah. do it like over and over again like it works for some things but for that creative process, like when there's infinite ways to get from point A to point B, like certain things like drawing, like you can draw mm -hmm. a straight line or you don't draw a straight line. Like yeah. it is or it is not, you know, mm -hmm. but you have that like ability to formulate your way from point A to point B mm -hmm. on a personal level that works for you. And it, I guess it goes back to what we we're talking about where you just take it and run, like, don't teach me how to do it. Just give me what I need and I'll figure it out. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I I often go back to uh, my parents are both teachers, and so I'd always argue Sick, with them yeah. of like, I think school's stupid, and it, but it's like they're that's what they love, and so it's yeah, always this dilemma yeah, of like, yeah. I think it's dumb, but I don't think they're dumb. So if they like this thing, and I don't like, where are we disagreeing? Yeah. Where are we not seeing eye to eye? And one thing my dad would always bring up that was like irrefutable to me is that like you're not learning calculus, you're learning how to learn, and the process of math is just one way to teach you how to learn that we can yeah. use for kids. And I think that's similar to the golf thing here, the the drawing thing of like you're just learning how to get better at stuff and yeah, practicing yeah, that, and absolutely. in that process you get better at everything. Uh, and I think that's been kind of a freeing thing for me of like, I can get better at video without only doing video. I can just like get better at being a human <laughs> and yeah, make the videos better. Because you can like, I I feel like especially the older I get, yeah, I can take things that I learn in one respect, and I'll find myself yeah. doing something totally different. And just catch myself translating like from one thing to another. And mm -hmm. I'm just like subconsciously and you're like sitting there you're like, oh, holy shit. Like I didn't even yeah. realize that I just did that. Like, yep. It's wild. Yeah. You know? Hell yeah, dude. Mission accomplished. Yeah, definitely. We are sick. probably close to my longest episode, if not there, which is sick. I've been trying to, uh, I've been trying to go longer. I've always like my, I think the one hour thing is like digestible and easy and more accessible to people. But I've always thought that like the it takes a while for people to get open. And I think there's some part of us that we can like choose to be. And by an hour yeah. and a half of talking to a microphone, there is nothing we can choose to be anymore. It is yeah, just no. us. It, it is only like, us. I was, it was like cool. I was like after my I just uh -huh. chugged a quick, quick drink. And I was like, <laughs> I'm talking. Yeah, yep. I could talk. It I takes a talk. minute. I could talk for a little while. Uh -huh. 100%. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate being open and honest and chatting through all the all the journeys we've been on. It's fun to look down. Yeah, I think I agree that memory lane is a valuable place to, to tap into and be aware of and just yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I, I think I started the conversation saying that I think we we live all these adventures and then just move on because we can't live in the past. But to me, it's like, no, nah, I want to hear about all these shows we played yeah, in Peoria, yeah. Illinois. Yeah, all the times like, didn't work. It's it's healthy. It's uh, definitely healthy yeah. to reflect on the good times and the positive experience. Even the yeah. negative. Like, I'm a super negative person, <laughs> and I take a lot of stuff from both sides of it, mm -hmm. and I translate it into like trying to move mm -hmm. forward and like be better. I yep. guess. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That one was sick. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Fuck. But yeah, like, like just t to your point, it's being able to digest the stuff in a healthy manner and yeah. move forward with it. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Definitely we'll make it happen again. Tell some more stories. Yeah, make thank life you. happen. I appreciate uh, it. As we wrap up episode 44 here, uh, where can people find you on social media? Where can they tell you that you did awesome, that they want to hear more Shape Thrower, that they would like to see more of you? Zach, it's Zach Lemieux. That's just Zach my name. Awesome. At, It'll be in the at description. At Zach Lemieux and on everything I thought. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Facebook, 
It'll all be in the description. Yeah, perfect. Um, Shape Thrower music coming out. Music videos coming out. We got shows in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Oh, I got the list when I was in the else. bathroom. Can I do a replug Hell yeah, real fast? Please. Yes, yeah, yes, right, yes. Sick, sick. I, Maddie yeah. came through two hours later. Yeah. All right. 1117 at Sammy's in Revere. 12 8 at Ralph's in Worcester. 1215 New World Tavern in Plymouth. And then we actually... I'm a, I'm a blow wide Whoa. open. We got a weekender coming up. I'm not Whoa. I'm not going to say who it's with right now just because, but it's uh, January 12th through January 14th, that Whoa. whole weekend. And then we're playing at dusk on 3-1. I didn't know about that. But, Whoa. But yeah, we got... See, I told you we had shows. Life's I just didn't up, fucking dude. know when they were. It's, Hell yeah, dude. If you made it this far, uh, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. I hate asking for those things, but it does help. And it is nice to see when people do like, comment, or subscribe. So... Do those things. I'm going nice. to go subscribe right now. Oh, my God, dude. I didn't, but I, oh I will. God, I'm going to like it, too. It's going to be sick as hell. I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone else who does it. And, yeah, Mission Accomplished, episode 44. 